Welcome to the 10-Minute Treasure. My name is Jeff Pospisil. And in this video, I want to cover the difference between cash accounting and accrual accounting. And I also want to show you how in QuickBooks Online, you can quickly and easily make that setting change. So I know this doesn't sound exciting, but this all has to do with when do you record a transaction? And churches can often play very fast and loose with these rules because there's not a whole lot of oversight. You know, you are um, not reporting a tax return to the IRS. You're not reporting to the stockholders. Um, so you, you often don't have independent auditors. You might have an internal auditor at best. Uh, most churches probably don't even have an audit. So you can really play fast and loose to try to please the pastor or the board um, and ignore accounting principles. So uh, that's why that's why I want to cover this. And this was one of the very first things that shocked me, I guess, in a way when I became a church accountant is I remember when I closed the books. So it would have been January. I closed the books. They were all nice and neat, well prepared. And I gave them to the board to look at and they looked, oh, we had a surplus from last year. We should spend it. And I thought to myself, I can't. You know, I, I closed the books. They're closed. <laughs> we can't record an expense because we're a cash accounting entity and the cash didn't go out last year. It would have to go out this year anyway. So I really struggled with this and I um, did record it as an expense in the, the current year and not the prior year because the books are closed. Um, but then I made sure I communicated it well to the board ahead of time that when we were getting close to the end of the year that they would know about how much money we would have left over. So anyway, that's how I did it from then on and I was able to protect the integrity of the books. But let's go ahead and get into the subject. So I'm gonna to try to explain really quickly the difference between cash and accrual and give an example. Um, but in short, in the cash method, you follow the cash. Or actually, since um, we don't use a whole lot of cash in our businesses, but you follow the payment or the money. So whether it's an electronic check or cash, you follow the money. So when a payment is made, money goes out, that's when you record the expense. When money comes in, that's when you record the revenue. In the accrual method, you're looking at the legal obligation. So somebody provides us a service or somebody delivers us goods, we have a legal obligation to pay them. So we record the expense at the time of that legal obligation. Uh, then uh, we also on the income side, when somebody owes us money, whenever that obligation is incurred, that is when we would record the income. We don't normally have to worry about the income side of things as much in uh, churches or nonprofits because a lot of donations. So there's not a whole lot of legal obligation to receive that money because we are providing them. We always put that little statement on there um, th that we don't provide them any goods or services except for intangible religious benefits. So anyway, so what does it look like? So imagine, for example, that I get the health insurance bill for the month of June and it's due by July 15th. So let's go with that as an example. So I get the bill and what do I do? I go ahead and I record health insurance expense. So this is an expense, probably should have written expense there, but let's say it's a thousand dollars. So I record that expense. And in the accrual, I also then record the, an accounts payable. That's just telling me how much I owe somebody. So this shows up on your balance sheet or statement of financial position as a liability. So $1,000 expense, $1,000 liability. And then when we, on the cash side, we don't record anything. Nothing happens because money didn't move yet, right? So then when we pay on July 15th, that accounts payable, I reverse that. So that ends up going away and then the cash goes out. So we already recorded the expense in June and then we record the cash going out in July. And in the cash method, we just record the health insurance expense and the checking, the amount going out of our checking both in July. So a big difference there. Um, there is an opportunity then to kind of adjust your financials depending on how when you pay it in the cash method. In the accrual method, you don't have as much flexibility there. So a lot more consistency 
um, because you're just looking at uh, when when the legal obligation uh, occurred. All right, so I'm in QuickBooks Online. In QuickBooks, they make it super easy to switch between cash and, and accrual. And for most of us nonprofits, we don't have to report to the IRS. So there's probably not a legal requirement for you, although you shouldn't just switch back and forth. You should really just choose one and go with it. Uh, most churches, I'd probably encourage you to just use cash method. It's easiest. Uh, you don't have to think like an accountant necessarily to do it. And I'll show you how to do that. So if you go up to this year on the upper right and click on that, and then under accounts and settings, click on that. And then when you go to the bottom there, it says advanced. And then on the very top, there's all this accounting stuff. And one of them is accounting method and mine says accrual. And I think you have a chance to set that when you very first uh, start, but you can change if you maybe decided you made a mistake or you don't like how it's done. Um, again, this is not something to play around with and change whenever it's most convenient for you. Uh, but if you click on that, they'll give you a longer explanation, but it's super easy to change. So you click on the little pencil and then there's a drop down box and you can choose between cash or accrual. And that'll just affect your reports. You can actually still do bills and invoices. Um, everything pretty much stays the same except for the reports. And even in the reports, by the way, I'm just gonna go ahead and pull up a report. Under reports, I have a statement of financial position, which is like a balance sheet. And you can see, uh, we have our bank accounts and then our liabilities. So here's the one liability you need to pay attention to. It says accounts payable, $548.61. So those are bills that I've received but have not yet paid. And then I have my equity and my net revenue and that kind of stuff. So up here, right up here, you have to scroll up. Sometimes that doesn't show up right away. So you scroll up. And it says cash or accrual. And so if I choose cash and hit run report, it'll run. And my bank accounts didn't change, but my accounts payable is gone. That used to be right above the credit cards, remember? And so that is gone. And then there's probably some changes in other areas as well. So mostly in the net revenue, I would guess. So super quick super easy if i want to go ahead and change it back i can do that and run report and you can do that with any of them too so i can also do that for my income statement or profit and loss or st statement of activities whatever you want to call it um, i can do that for that as well and it'll just show it differently so if you're making a decision maybe um, that's how you might do it is to just look at what the difference is All right, hopefully that helps. Um, hopefully you see where I'm coming from. I just want consistency, you know, at least for our accounting. I don't want us to play around when we record income and expenses in a way to make our books look better at the expense of maybe the next year them looking worse. You know, I just want us to be consistent. Whatever happens, happens. As long as we just play by the principles, it'll make it a lot easier for you as an accountant or as a treasurer. All right, if you like this, if you appreciated it, like, subscribe, share, and until next time, God bless.